Hey beautiful people, what is up and welcome back to my channel and welcome to another video. This is gonna be another chatty get ready with me. Y'all know we changed any name of it, so I'm still working on it. Give me some time, I have some thoughts. One of you guys suggested real talk with Jamila, which I kinda like and I'm like real talk and real thoughts, maybe. I don't know, we'll get there when we get there. Um, This is not straight. I feel like my camera bend, but either way, let's just keep going with it. Um, so for today's video, I want to talk about something that really just kind of like came to my mind yesterday while I'm driving and all y'all it's early in the morning. I have a headache and everything is moving kind of slow. So just rock with me. So I'm going to go in with the Cala palette. This is from Ace Beauté. It is a gorgeous, gorgeous neutral palette and it is one of the most affordable palettes that's available on the market right now. So I thought I would go in with this cause I kind of want to keep things simple today. Nothing too much, no, not too much fuss, not too much anything. So we're going to just dive right in. If this is your first time watching me, hi, welcome. I'm Jamila. I love all things beauty. I love all things makeup and skincare. And I especially love sharing my tips and tricks for how to find high-end and luxury beauty products at bargain prices. So if that sounds like something you're interested in, I would absolutely love if you would consider subscribing and joining the fam. Okay. Okay, so I'm not really going to talk through, through this per usual. We're just going to dive right into the talking. So like I said, I wanted to talk about something that really just kind of came on my spirit a little um, unexpectedly. And the topic is really centered around the fear of failure and the inability to try because you are afraid of failing. And the reason why this came to mind for me is I've been really thinking about my content lately and where I want my channel to go and what my goals are for my channel. Now, if you've been following me for some time, or if you just joined, um, I started my channel back in 2020. December 2020, in the middle of the pandemic, you know, like many of us, we had nothing to do. So I think there was actually a pretty significant spike in YouTube channels back at that point because everybody was home. The only thing that was available to us was the internet. So a lot of people turned to YouTube, to TikTok, to all of these social media platforms for connection. And here we are now almost three years later, and I am very proud to say that my channel is still going strong <laughs> because when you look at all of the people who started channels in the pandemic, a lot of them don't exist anymore. And this is not to be shady or anything in terms of like, oh, I survived and they didn't. I think it really is that a lot of people realize that they didn't want to do this because creating content for YouTube, hell, creating content for any social media platform is and I'm choosing my words very carefully because I don't want to say it's hard because it's not hard but it is time consuming and because of that it gives the impression that this is hard when you realize how much hours are spent creating content it feels hard but in reality in terms of brain power manual labor I wouldn't call it hard just my opinion but you know, it's fully understandable why a lot of people who did start channels in the pandemic decided, you know what, this just isn't for me. I don't have the time to commit to doing this. Especially because with with starting my channel, when I first started, everything was new. It would take me days to edit a video, literal days. And that's because I had no idea what I was doing. I literally had to learn things as I was going along. I would be YouTubing and Googling how to edit and, you know, finding, just <laughs> learning a simple trick could take an hour in itself. And then I'd have to go back and edit the video. So, like, I would remember one video would take me, like, two days to edit. Which sounds wild now because now if I film a video and it's an hour, it would take me about an hour to edit it. And in those first early days, you know, I found myself really being a bit of a perfectionist. Like, I had a, a, a vision and not even a clear vision, but I had an idea of what I wanted my videos to look like from seeing other YouTubers, other creators. And I really, really tried to emulate that as best as I could without really understanding that some of the creators and some of the YouTubers that I was trying to emulate are full-time YouTubers. So for them, they have the luxury of having an eight-hour weekday just dedicated to this. And they could spend the time doing some of those fancy editing and whatnot that I just did not have the luxury of doing because I do have a full-time job that I need to commit my time to. So, 
you know, the first six months, year of content creation really, really was a, a learning curve. But here we are, almost three years later, like I said, and I am still here. And most importantly, I still enjoy it. And this is kind of where my thought for this, um, for this video really stemmed from it. Because I have always said that YouTube is a hobby. I do not want to make this a job. This is something that brings me joy. This is something that makes me happy. I really wanna make sure that I protect that by making sure that this does not feel like work for me, that this does not become work for me. Because once it becomes work, once it becomes a job, it's going to, I'm going to dislike it. And then I'm gonna be mad because the thing that I once loved is now a stressor and a pain point in my life. And as I was thinking about that yesterday, I, a thought just popped into my head. And I'm saying a thought, but it was like, Jesus just jumped into my head and said, but Jamila, aren't you doing yourself a disservice? And I was like, but what do you mean? <laughs> and Jesus said, listen, I'm having a conversation with Jesus in my head. Jesus said, Jamila, aren't you doing a disservice to yourself? And I was like, well, what do you mean? And Jesus said, <laughs> you have decided that YouTube is a hobby and you are not going to commit to it. So you are not reaching the full potential that you can reach because you are afraid of failing if you dedicate the amount of time and energy and resources into doing this right. And I was like, huh. <laughs> and I really started ruminating on that and I really started thinking about that. And I started thinking about my YouTube journey and how I got here, where I am at now. Like I said, started in 2020, where we are now, we're close to 3000 subscribers and I'm so, so happy about that. But I think about the way in which I got here, which was pretty, sporadic there was no plan there was no there was nothing was planned out there was nothing thought out there was zero structure to this I was winging this from the jump and it kind of sucks to think that three years later I'm still winging it I don't have any sort of structure or vision for this and it's like I refused to give myself a vision because if I gave myself a vision and a goal for my channel it would no longer become a hobby but by not giving myself a goal and a vision and a direction for this channel, I have like stunted how successful this could be, if that makes sense. At least that's what Jesus was trying to tell me in my mind. And truthfully, I'm still trying to work out, you know, that conversation <laughs> because Jesus don't give you the answers straight up. It's never like, he pops in and he says, I need you to do X, Y, Z by X, Y, Z this specific way. No, 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 no. He will just start giving you some nuggets and you have to figure out the rest. So I've been ruminating and ruminating and ruminating on that, you know, conversation and that message in my head. And here's where I am right now. I have realized that I have been holding myself back from fully committing to this channel because I'm afraid that this is just going to fail, that I'm going to waste my time and this is just going to fail. If I continue to convince myself that this is just a hobby, if everything goes away, it's fine. There's nothing at stake. You know, it was just a hobby. I was just doing this for fun. I was just playing in this, you know? But there has always been this like thing in the back of my mind that was like, what if you do commit to this? What if you actually put some real effort into this channel, into this work? And you guys are probably gonna be like, well, what do you mean by real effort? You, you know, post every week. You definitely are engaged. You, you respond to con comments and all of that. You are putting effort. And I agree. There is certainly a level of effort that I am putting into this work in terms of filming and uploading and having not necessarily a clear cut schedule, but a consistent enough schedule where for at least the past year, this entire year, I have been 
posting at least once a week and I am pretty proud of that. But I know myself and I know that this is not me giving 100% at all. This isn't even me giving 50%. So I know that this has been kind of lackadaisical on my end. So I really am thinking like, what would, what would, what could happen if I really put some effort into this? If I stopped viewing this as some kind of fly by night hobby and actually committed to my content, to my channel, to growing, to improving, what does that look like for me? So that's kind of where I'm at right now and I'm still really trying to figure out what that means. I know I have to do some more journaling, some reflecting and really try to get an understanding of what one Jesus was trying to tell me yesterday into how to move that forward. Because here's the thing, I am a very structured or I try to be and I'm, I have fallen off of that in a lot of ways and I'm trying to get back to that. But I am the most successful when I am like very structured and I have a clear cut vision and a end goal in sight. I don't need to know these steps to get there. I don't need to know the path. I will figure that out and I will make it up along the way because that is what, you know, life is. As long as I know what the end goal is and I have a vision, I can get there. And I have not had that for this channel. I have not had that for any of my content creation. It's just kind of been like, oh, this is fun. Let's just play around and see what happens, which at this point no longer works for me. So I need to make a shift. Now, I did not do any scripting for this video today, so I know that there are going to be things that I'm going to forget, points that I'm not going to make quite as clear as I would like them to make, so, as I would like them to be, so please forgive me if this feels a little kind of all over the place. I just wanted to come on here and put this on video. Yeah, this is almost kind of like a video diary, but I wanted to come on here and say this because it, it's just been bothering me, bothering me, bothering me. Like, I went to sleep last night, and I just kept you know, tossing and turning and thinking about it. So I wanted to come here and say this out loud and have, you know, something kind of tangible because when I look back at this and when I'm editing this, I will be able to be like, you know what? Yeah, I, I understand. I understand what's happening. <laughs> Hopefully. So here's one of the things or the first realizations that I've made so far. I have said several times on camera, off camera that you know, content creation is my hobby and I do not want this to feel like work. If it feels like work, it's going to be a problem, blah, blah, blah. But I have realized that that is the biggest cop out and line of BS I could have ever told myself because the reality is everything is work. Life is work. So why would this be any different? And by that I mean like, yes, there's the traditional work of like you get up in the morning and you go to your job and you work at your job, that's work. But when you think about everything else, relationships are work, whether that be friendships, your family, your partner, that's work. Uh, working out is work. If you decide that you want to be fit and active, you have to work out. You have to make sure that you are prepping and meal planning and, and putting a lot of effort and energy into that spirituality is working whether you be a religious person or not if you want to have a relationship with god or whoever it is you serve that is work so if every aspect of life is work why would this be any different why would this be any, any why you know like why would this not be work and hobbies are work too like all your passion is work if you are passionate about something regardless of if that is part of your career or not, you have to work at your passions, right? Whether that be singing or theater or performing or traveling, it takes work. Nothing in this life just comes and magically drops itself in, in your lap. And <laughs> I, I really, really and truly think that that is what Jesus was trying to show me is that stop trying to look at this as this is work and some kind of negative thing because it is work and look at it as like, something positive like flip that to something positive like this is something that you are passionate about why not work at it why would you not want to put in work for something that you are passionate about and here's the kicker right 
Here is the kicker. I also realized that in addition to everything in life being work, by not considering makeup and content creation work, I have actually created more work for myself. And when I tell you, I feel like a caca hole. I feel like a complete idiot now that I have realized that by not fully committing to creating content and I and even now I'm struggling to say by being a content creator because it just sounds wild to me um by not by struggling to not fully commit to being a content creator by struggling to fully not dedicate myself to the content that I'm creating I have created more work for myself and it has taken me almost three years to realize that which is wild and let me explain what I mean by more work. So, like I said at the beginning, creating content is not hard. This is by no means a hard thing to do, but it is time consuming. And because I have always considered this to be a hobby, I have never dedicated or set aside time to create my content. Usually, it's kind of like when I have time, whenever I can fit it in. And that's why every time I tell you guys, you know, like, go ahead and subscribe, click the bell, because I don't have an upload schedule. When you see it, you'll see it. It's really because I don't plan anything out to that extent. I don't really plan out what videos are going to go up when. I don't plan out what days I want to upload it. I don't plan what days I want to film. I don't plan anything. I am just going going with the flow, which because it's so unstructured, my time is so unstructured that it's all over the place and it's creating chaos when I could just structure my content creation, have t dedicated time to do this and have dedicated time when I'm not doing this. Because when I don't have or don't dedicate my time or don't schedule or structure my time, what I find is that I am either always working on this or always thinking about it. It's like, oh, well, when am I going to film this? When am I going to edit this? When am I going to do that? Versus why not commit myself to doing this and to doing it well and just, you know, sit down at the beginning of the week on a Sunday and make sure that this is intentionally written into my plan, into my schedule. You know, I, and I'm working on structure in my, my entire life in general, right? Like I want to make sure that I'm getting back to a structured place. And now that I've moved and I'm in this new space, there is the shift that's coming with, okay, now you have a new apartment. Now you need a new routine. What does that look like? And this is such a perfect time, you know, like moving is such a great time to reset and to reanalyze what currently is your routine, is your structure and decide, does this still work for me? And if it doesn't, change it, find a new routine, find a new structure. So that's what I'm looking to do. I really want to make sure that I am incorporating my content creation into a way that is intentional so that it's not as sporadic because imagine... Imagine if I just said, hey, here's the deal, Jamila. You are going to film on Saturdays for three hours. That gives me time to film, let's say, like three videos. And that's it. That's all of the filming you're going to do for the week. You're only going to film on Saturday. Or maybe, depending on, on what it is, you might film one day before work during the week. Right? That's four videos. And these are the, so you're going to film Saturday, Wednesday. Let's just use that. And then in addition to saying when I'm going to film, I schedule exactly what I'm going to film. So I know that I can prep this stuff before I start filming. And then I say, all right, so your filming days are Saturday and Wednesday and your editing days are gonna be Tuesday and t Thursday after work. And you're gonna edit for an hour and a half or an hour. That leaves me Sunday to do whatever I want. Monday to do whatever I want. Friday to do whatever I want that has nothing to do with content. You see, versus 
I don't have a schedule. I don't have anything put together. So like every day I'm kind of like scrounging and trying to figure out, oh my gosh, when was the last time I uploaded? Do I need to do a video? How much days has it been since I uploaded? Do I have time to edit this afternoon? Can I go work out? Where does this fit in? If I go to the gym and then I come back and then I cook dinner and then I have to do the, you see, just chaos, absolute chaos. <laughs> so what that ends up being is that I work on content almost every day, guys. Like every single day I am doing something with my content, whether that be filming early in the morning before work or filming on the weekends because that's when I do like pretty much the bulk of my filming. Almost all of my filming is done on Saturdays and Sundays. And then during the week in the afternoon, I'm always editing something. So instead of me dedicating two or three days to my content where I know I'm going to like work hard to make sure it gets done, I now have to work seven days a week on this. So I have in turn created so much more work for myself and it's annoying. So I'm going in with the Peach and Lily, Peach and Lily Smooth and Blue Primer. Um, which is just a sample that I got. Also, and if I look a little blue in, in this video at the beginning, it's my sunscreen. I know I was blue in the last like video that I did, <laughs> or the video before this one that I um, was in, and I promise you guys it's the sunscreen. It just gives a uh, blue grayish tint. And even this is making me look a little gray, Jesus. Full foundation, I'm gonna go in with my House Labs foundation. So as I was saying, um, you know, <laughs> in reflecting on, on all of this, I realized that I was simply creating more work for myself. The more I try to not put some structure to this, to this, to just willy nilly create content whenever, wherever, it's really created a space where I'm so unstructured that everything else is suffering for it. You know, like there are times when okay, I wanna cook or I wanna work out and <laughs> I put those things on the back burner because, okay, I need to edit this video. Like imagine if I created a structure for my life where I really prioritized those key core pieces where, okay, I know that this is my gym time or this is my workout from home time and that's that. This is my editing time. And that's not to say that I need to be rigid with it because I don't want to be so structured where everything is rigid. Like, that's not what I'm saying at all. But I am saying that by not having any structure whatsoever, everything is so loosey-goosey that it just kind of feels all over the place. And in some ways, it feels like things are falling through the cracks. And again, going back to that thing that I was saying before is... Jesus was like, girl, you're doing a disservice to yourself. And you know, my channel is still really small and my platforms, all of them are still super small, but I have been so fortunate to have the opportunities to work with brands that I love and that I adore and to receive BR, PR from brands that I really enjoy, that brands reach out to me to ask me to do things. You know, like I have been really blessed so far for such a small platform. And imagine what if I actually put some work into it. Imagine if I actually put my back into it and <laughs> put a little bit of extra effort and structure to this and did this well, you know? And like I said, I know I'm not doing this as good as I can. And I feel like I could just improve and be so much better if I just had a little bit of structure, if I just had a little bit of direction. And adding structure to my hobbies does not make them any less of a hobby, does not take away from the fact that if I wake up tomorrow and this no longer serves me, I could still say, you know what, this was fun, but this is no longer serving me where I need to be served, this is no longer bringing me joy. I'm a head out. <laughs> like there is literally nothing stopping me from doing that and simply dedicating 
more time to this and committing to this does not prevent me from being able to walk away if I need to. Or from making this less of a hobby or less enjoyable. So what does that mean for this channel? What does this mean for my content going forward? Honestly, I don't know. You guys might see a change or you might not. But what it means for me is that I... I now have to spend some time coming up with a vision for my channel, coming up with a roadmap, a plan, some sort of direction, and actually putting that to paper and building time out and dedicating time to it. So you might see a schedule pop up, maybe. <laughs> you might see me say, you know what? These are the days that I will have videos going up. Or you might not, it might not even be that level of structure because I do think that finding structure for this and figuring out what is the right flow for me is gonna take a little bit of time. You know, I don't expect to do one thing and that suddenly be what works. A lot of things are trial and error and I think that this is one of those. I think that I'm gonna try a couple things until I figure out, you know what, this is the cadence that works for me. This is the time that works for me. This is how this is gonna fit in. And the reason why I think this is gonna be trial and error is because I am doing this in conjunction to trying to find structure in other aspects of my life as well. Like, I feel like even though we are three years removed from Mr. Panini, I am still building my life back. And not even building my life back, building a new life. That's what it comes down to is that I can't go back to being Jamila that was there before pandemic times. That, we're not going backward, you know? Life is about moving forward. So I am figuring out who am I now, today, in 2023? And who do I want to be tomorrow, in 2023, in 2024, you know? So I'm not looking back at what was and looking forward to what what I want my life to be and what I want this channel to be. So I'm gonna, you know, spend some time figuring out where all of the things fit in because there are so many things that got deprioritized this over the past couple of years, you know? I have to find a new church. I have to, you know, make sure I'm dedicating my Sunday mornings to going to church. I have to start working out again and figure out whether that means going back to the gym or working out from home, you know? Do I actually want to go to a gym or do I want to find other ways to work out? And it could be another type of gym. I used to box before. Um, I used to go to boxing classes several years ago and I thought that was really great. I used to do some Les Mills classes at another gym and I loved those. So, you know, working out doesn't have to be just going to a standard gym and I have to figure out how am I gonna bring physical activity back into my life? What does that look like? I want to start cooking again because I need to eat better. I need to eat healthier. And quite frankly, I used to enjoy cooking. So I don't know why that suddenly became a thing that felt so much like a chore for me. But it is so important for me to nourish my body properly and to nourish my body with the foods that I know I'm going to enjoy. <laughs> I am Caribbean. I mean, y'all know that. Y'all know I'm Trini. But, okay, what is happening, Light? But where I live does not have any Caribbean food, you know? And, and I shouldn't say any. They have some Caribbean spots. One, most of them in Jamaica, and two, they're not good. Um, so if I want to eat the foods from home, the foods that bring me joy, I got to make it myself. So I want to start cooking again. And, you know, that takes time. But, you know, part of why I need to start doing that is because if I'm able to cook and meal prep the way that I need to, it helps me be more efficient with my time. And I think that this is what it comes down to at the end is that I feel like I've been feeling this sense of the days running away from me and feeling this sense of like, why do I not have any time? And it's not that I don't have any time because we all have the same 24 hours in a day. It's just that I have been so inefficient with my time guys that by the time half 10 at night reaches, I'm like, what the hell did I do all day? Like, it shouldn't be 
that I am like, where did all the time go? And then when I look back and I try to figure out what I did in the time, it's like, come on, you have accomplished nothing. Now, I don't wanna say that I'm accomplishing nothing in that time because I think it's really important to make sure that I am not judging myself for resting because I have a very, very bad habit of if I am not doing something, if I am not occupying my time in a way that feels constructive, I feel lazy. I feel like I am wasting time and I'm very, 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 very hard and judgmental on myself. So I, this is something I've been working on and I'm trying to work on still. I'm trying to make sure that I'm not hard on myself when I'm giving myself rest. So just because I'm not doing anything doesn't mean that I'm lazy. Just because I am not occupying every second of my waking day does not mean that I am just wasting time, just wasting away and being this like completely lazy person. It's, it's a process, I know, I'll get there, but it's something that I have to be very careful about. But I think what can be helpful is having a little bit of structure. And if I build rest into my structure, it makes things better. And it also gives me more opportunities for rest. Because like I said, there are times when I like think about getting to 10 o'clock, half 10, and it's time for me to get ready to go to bed. And I'm like, what the hell did I do all day? And then I still don't feel rested <laughs> because I'm like, I've been doing things all day, but I still didn't finish all the things that I wanted to get done. And I don't feel like I was able to rest at all. So, you know, instead of working 24 seven on one thing or the other, a little bit of structure I think will give me the chance to have just more free rest, you know? Time that I know is just unscheduled, mine to do whatever with, and it frees up mental time for me. Because if I know, if I know that these are the days that I'm gonna film, these are the days that I'm gonna edit, this is the time that I'm gonna wake out, this is the time that I'm gonna cook, then I know then I'm not going to constantly be thinking about, well, when am I going to edit this? When am I going to do this? When am I going to do that? Because that's already been decided, you know? I wouldn't be sitting here like I'm doing right now thinking about, I have like six, seven videos filmed and I don't know when I'm going to edit it. Who knows, you know? Might be today, might be tomorrow, might be Sunday. <laughs> so it's such a free for all with my schedule that I never know when I'm gonna do things. So I'm constantly, constantly, constantly thinking about it versus giving myself some parameters so that my mind isn't constantly taken up with my to-do list of things that could have already been planned out. And like I said, I'm not trying to be rigid with this. You know, things, things come up and because I need to make sure that I am protecting my space this hobby, I I need to make sure that they're guardrail. So even though I am gonna make sure that I schedule this or, or think about, you know, having a schedule so that I know when things are gonna be filmed and edited and blah, blah, blah. I'm giving myself, you know, the freedom to change, to edit, to cancel. So if somebody says, hey sis, you wanna go for brunch tomorrow? I can be like, yeah and not feel like, oh my gosh, this is gonna throw off my schedule. No, I can reschedule things. It's completely fine. Just because I say this is what's happening doesn't mean that I have to deprioritize other things. Because at the end of the day, I think that I need to make sure that I am prioritizing and thinking about how I prioritize things really well because, you know, Spirituality, faith, family, friends, those are all things that I value a lot higher than this. Um, and I don't want them to fall to the wayside. And, you know, one, one of the other things that I think is really important when it comes to creating content that I didn't really talk about is the fact that, yes, there's the filming, there's the editing, there's the uploading, but the more I become engaged in creating content, the more I realize that there's this whole other piece of it, especially when it comes to like working with brands and 
all of that that I didn't really take into account. So, you know, like spending an hour reading and answering emails or reading and answering comments, like all of those things are time that's a part of this that you don't really realize until you're actually doing it, you know? So all of those things are things that I've learned in the years that I've been doing this and I now have to think about the time that I need to make sure that I am actually present and doing this well. Like I don't wanna miss business opportunities from brands when they reach out via email and I want to make sure that I am actively engaging with you all by reading the comments, responding to them. I may not get to everyone, but I'm small enough now that I can. And there's also the other aspect of YouTube isn't my only platform. And I wouldn't say that I'm necessarily trying to grow on Instagram like that because Instagram is just like my personal, I share what I wanna share. Most of the times it's, it's makeup looks or whatever, but it's also like everything else. <laughs> I don't have a separate Instagram. That's my one and only Instagram page. So it's kind of a hodgepodge of everything. Uh, but I, I still want to be active on there. So, you know, figuring out that piece as well, because once you start managing multiple platforms, that's additional time. And if I was able to structure my content in a way that makes best, that makes sense, I could do a better job at leveraging content for multiple platforms. And that's not something that I've thought about really well, about like the cohesive nature of my Instagram versus my YouTube, my versus my Lemonade, and thinking about how do I utilize content that I've created for one platform on multiple platforms so I'm not working three, four times as hard. You know, work smarter, not harder, that's the plan. That's essentially the goal. All right, this is what the face is looking like. Let me go ahead and finish this up and I'll come back and wrap up the video for you guys. Okay guys, I'm back and this is the final look. For the lips, I am wearing my Toasty liner from Morphe and then I went in with the lip cream from, what is the shade? It's called Anne and this is from Sydney Grace. I love these little lip creams, they're so good. Okay, so let me just wrap up my thoughts really quickly. Actually, let me tell you guys something. This, she cute. This is such a nice, beautiful, neutral palette. This is only $20, so I really think that this is a great option if you're looking for a solid, affordable, neutral palette with like great shine, great pigmentation, superb mattes that blend well, good option. I'm actually thinking about doing a video that's focused on some of the affordable options out there when it comes to makeup, um, especially in sort of the indie market that aren't like drugstore makeup, you know? So let me know if you guys would be interested in that because I am finding a couple of really affordable options out there and that has been my whole vibe lately. You know, I love me some luxury, I love me some high-end and I love getting it on sale. But if there are brands that are just reasonably priced, I wanna tell you guys that as well. Um, and I have a growing list in my mind. So let me know if you're interested in hearing about that. Anyways, what I was saying. So like I said, when I started this video, you know, I, I've come to the realization that I'm doing myself this sort of disservice in a way in which I approach my content because I'm afraid of failing. You know, I'm afraid of if I put enough or like really, really dedicate energy and time to this, what happens if I don't grow? What happens if I'm not successful? And that's hard for me to swallow because I have not defined what success for me is on this channel. Like I don't really care to be making like a bunch of money off of my content. Like I didn't go into this thinking that I would and that's still not my motivation for doing this. Um, but I do have goals when it comes to like growing uh, the amount of subscribers and having a larger community because that's what I really enjoy about this is the community, the talking about makeup, you know, finding people that love this as much as I do. Um, this is one important part of who I am and it's just one part of who I am, but that doesn't mean that it should be diminished in any way and that I should not dedicate something, dedicate time and effort to it because I'm afraid that 
I'm not gonna be successful in it. So if you were looking for a sign, y'all, this is your sign to do not let the fear of failure stop you from doing something that you enjoy, doing something that you love. Either you fail or you don't fail, at least you learn and at least you tried. There's nothing worse than not trying. And I can't believe it's taken me this long to realize that. So what does that mean for my content going forward? Um, like I said, I don't know if you guys are necessarily gonna see a shift in it, but what it means for me is that I am now going to dedicate more time and effort into how I plan and structure my content. So you guys might actually see a shift in there being more structured to when things are uploaded, um, when I have premieres, when I don't have premieres, the consistency in which things come out, me letting you guys know in advance when things are coming out, um, and being able to say, you know, this is gonna be out next Tuesday, and I think that that is where I'm gonna see a shift. You guys are gonna see a shift in this content. In my life personally, I think what that's gonna do for me is that that's gonna give me a lot more opportunity to, one, improve the, the quality of my content because it would be a little bit more structured, and to create space to do other things, which in some terms may give me an opportunity to have more content, right? If I'm not spending time haphazardly creating content, it means that I can actually incorporate the other parts of my life that I love. Think about how I really and intentionally want to place travel content into this. Um, think about uh, lifestyle content because you guys know I want to get back to waking out and I love hiking and I love doing all of these other things that I still do, but I've never really thought about how to really intentionally incorporate it. So I think it's going to free up by, by being a little bit more structured in specific areas of my life and not just in content creation, in everything else, it's really gonna give me a sense of peace, a sense of calm and a sense of direction. So I don't feel like I'm just floating in air, um, moving from one thing to the next. So that's gonna be the plan for me. So, got you, Jesus. <laughs> um, Y'all, when Jesus says, listen, sis, you just gotta sit down and listen to it. He just puts things right there in perspective for you. And it's so, <laughs> it's like, oh, I should have been doing this all the time. It's like so wild when it happens, but yeah. Um, so I am, I am positive, I'm feeling hopeful. This is not gonna be an overnight shift. That's not how habits work. That's not how habits form. So this is gonna take some time. And with that, if you guys have any recommendations for how you find structure in your life, how you form habits, what are your tips and tricks for making sure that you are able to maintain structure in when you have multiple moving parts going on, leave all that in the comments below because I'm very, very open to it. Also, let me know your thoughts on how, uh, uh, on areas that you may be feeling unstructured or areas where you may be feeling like you weren't able to commit because you're so afraid of failing that you, didn't try in the first place. All right, I know this was a little bit rambly, I know it was a little bit all over the place. I did not script this at all. I just came up here and just spoke. <laughs> so we'll see what this looks like when it goes back to editing time. But I do wanna thank you guys so much for listening. I hope you are enjoying all of these kind of like chatty, get ready with me type videos, um, because I really do. I love our conversation. This should be a premiere, so we should be chatting in the, in the live chat. Um, so, oh, I'm not the chat. Yeah, I guess it is a live chat. We should be chatting down there. So let me know. As always, thank you. Thank you guys so much for watching. Don't forget to hit that like button. Subscribe on your way out if you enjoy the content and you want to see more from me. I appreciate you guys so much more than you know. Take care of yourself and I'll catch you in the next one. Bye.